Welcome to Church on the Rise. It is our hope that you are encouraged, enriched and enlarged as you listen to this week's message. Today I'd like to speak to you in regards to Christ as the I Am. And really uh, I could do a series and possibly will on this. It's, it's about the Messiah, it's about Jesus, and, and more the person of Jesus, of who He is. Not what Jesus has done or doing, but who He is. You know, if we can understand who He is, then we'll be able to interpret what He does. You can interpret the Bible rightly when you understand the nature and the character of God. And so we'll look at who he is, and seek to understand what he does. Seven times in, the, in John's gospel, we find Jesus saying, I am. He says, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the true vine. If Jesus was around today, he'd probably say, I am a mobile phone. You can communicate with me, you know. These terms were very much metaphors of of those days. But as we understand them, we will get to know him. And Jesus is really trying to communicate to his world at his time that he was the Messiah, that he was God in the flesh. He had to do that without getting killed. He lasted three years, but for someone to come out and say, hey, I'm God... You had a whole lot of religious people there called the Pharisees and Sadducees who say, well, that's blasphemy. And so for anybody to call them God meant death. And ultimately, that's why they crucified Jesus. But he was the Son of God. And so he had to explain himself to let people know him and get into his world in in a really challenging time. But thank God he was able to do that. You know, many people know about God, but not so many know Him. This message and these messages on the I Am helps us know Him. To know about someone is impersonal. To know someone is so personal. And we need to know Him. He wants to know you. And deep down in every heart, in every person, our spirit cries out for our Creator. The one who we were born for and ultimately heaven is our home. In 2 Corinthians, it it gives a wonderful verse explaining this. It says, But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. When we behold Him, when we see Him, we will be changed. We will actually become like Him. And so uh, this message today and these messages are to help us behold the One. And we're going to turn to the Gospel of John chapter 4. There's a great story there. It's just too long for me to read the whole story. So I've taken various verses and put them together to try and give you the context of this story. But this is a wonderful story about the woman at the well. John 4, 42, and you'll see me missing some of the verses. But it says, he had to go through Samaria on the way. Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water and Jesus said to her, please give me a drink. And Jesus, uh, Jesus replied, if you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you living water. But sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket, she said, and this well is very deep. Where would you get this living water? And besides, do you think you're greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us this well? How can you offer better water than he and his sons and his animals enjoyed? Jesus replied, Anyone who gives this water will soon become thirsty again, but those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. Please, sir, the woman said, give me this water 
then I'll never be thirsty again and I won't have to come here to get water. Jesus said to her, go and get your husband. I don't have a husband, the woman replied. Jesus said, you're right, you don't have a husband for you have had five husbands and you aren't even married to the man you're living with now. You certainly spoke the truth. The woman said, I know the Messiah is coming the one who is called Christ. And when he comes, he will explain everything to us. And Jesus told her, I am the Messiah. Jesus then, just then his disciples came back and they were shocked to find him talking to a woman, but none of them had the nerve to ask, what do you want with her? Or why are you talking to her? And the woman left her water jar beside the well and ran back to the village telling everyone, come and see a man who has told me everything I ever did. Could he possibly be the Messiah? So the people came streaming from the village to see him. I just think this is a wonderful, wonderful story of Jesus explaining himself and declaring who he was. First of all, he says, well, the scripture says he had to go through Samaria on the way. Many of you would know that the Samaritans and the Jews just didn't get on. In fact, the Jews despised the, the, the Samaritans. There was, there was certainly discrimination against each other, and they certainly didn't do coffee together. It would, like, it, it would be a little bit like Adolf Hitler saying, I am going to Jerusalem to have coffee with the president of Israel. And Jesus saying to his disciples, look, I'm going through Samaria today, would have raised a few eyebrows amongst his disciples and what the heck's he up to today? We don't go through that way. We don't talk to them. And certainly they had no real relationship but the reason Jesus was to go through Samaria was God had an appointment with a woman God wanted to meet this woman that day and Jesus arrives about midday when there was no one there and so Jesus arrives at the well there's no one there the disciples are hungry so you know they said we're going off to Maccas maybe KFC to get a take away lunch they went uh, just in the background it seemed that the well was probably at least a kilometer or so from uh, the village they had to walk out a kilometer and back so it's a two kilometer walk and they left and Jesus is there alone you know sometimes God takes you to places and you're just sitting there thinking what the heck am I doing here why, why did you bring me out here? We don't know whether Jesus knew why he was at the well. All we knew, all we know is that Jesus said, I got to go by a well. And it's often the way the Holy Spirit leads us in life. He says, I want you to do this. And then when we get there, he gives us further instruction. You want to thank God that God doesn't tell you the whole story the day you were born. Because some of you would say, you know what, that's just too overwhelming. <laughs> I can't go there in our mind. And sometimes in our minds, we can't go where, where Jesus wants to take us. But let me say to you today that wherever he takes you is, is the will of God for your life and you're going to enjoy the adventure in him. Amen. And so Jesus is there by the well. He's sitting there. And uh, the scripture says that soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water. It's midday. This woman's alone. Normally the women of the city would have gone in the morning. They would have gone. They would have, uh, in the cool of the cool of morning, they would have gone. They would have got their water. They would have talked. All the girls know how to talk. Girls know how to do coffee and talk. Trust me, I'm married to one. And so the women would have been there, would have been their, you know, uh, connection time together. They would have uh, enjoyed the journey. There was safety, uh, more safety, the fact that they would have had to walk out there together. But this lady, she walks out 
of the village and she is alone. She is by herself. And that in itself is so significant in her journey. She doesn't want to be seen by the other women. She does not walk in community. She's hiding. She's wounded and she's beaten up by her past. We know that Jesus addresses her pain and looks at her pain and we'll come to that. But the scripture clearly says and Jesus says to her, you've had five marriages. You know, when you say five, you just sort of, yeah, five marriages. But five, there's a lot of marriages. I was thinking about this and trying to imagine how it played out. You know, how did it play out in her day? Maybe the first guy was Tom. And she met Tom and it was like the princess meeting the prince and this is it. I've found my Prince Charming and she walks down the aisle with Tom and she's got rose-coloured glasses and she's saying, I found me a man and life's going to be good and away we go. But only a couple of years into the marriage she realised it's not working out and Tom didn't really like her cooking anyway and things weren't as good as she wanted it to be and sooner or later they got divorced. And so she's, she's lost her first husband. W will I go again? Come on, I, I want you to get into the story this morning. Think about, think about this lady. W will I, what will I do now? Will, will, I, will I go again? It, it's looked down upon just to live with somebody, especially with the law, and rightly so. I'll just add that little bit, and rightly so. Thou shalt not commit adultery is still the, one of the Ten Commandments. And, uh, yeah, I think I'll go again because there's got to be hope in this world. There's, this has got to work. This is God's will, and I'll go again. And so she finds Peter. He was a real spunk. He was hot. It's got to work with Peter. But sadly, it wasn't too long and it didn't work with Peter either. Drats. Well, what will I do now? I've got to give it to this girl. She had great courage. She says, I'm going again. So she begins looking and she finds Phil, Philip. Phil had a lot of money. She thought, he'll be able to look after me. And Phil had all the money, you know, that she could ever want. And she thought, this has got to be it. It's got to work with Phil. But sadly, it wasn't in the money. And the relationship broke down. And so she goes through her third marriage. Well, what does she do after three? Come on, you can't go for four. Can you? Can you? I can't give up. This has got to work. Maybe it's in the name. Well, she found Andrew. And Andrew's got to be it. This is number four. Come on, I can't fail again. But sadly, she fails again. She's, she's failed in a marriage four times. You can't go again, can you? Really? Really? What do people think? How's this going to look? But she goes again. And she finds Reuben. Reuben. And she's working at this and she's oh God, this, this one's got to work. This, this marriage has just got to work. It's five. It's the number of grace. Maybe it's it was going to take five for me to finally have your favour and, and help in life. So number five. And sadly, it falls over. And so she looks at herself and says, you know what? I'm just going to live with Fred. 
I'm just going to live with Fred. I'm broken, I'm tired, and I'm not trying again. I'm not doing this again, because I can't. So she's up to number six. It's interesting in the Bible, isn't it? The number six. Six stands for man or mankind. It's what we can do in our own efforts. The human needs the divine. The human was born for the divine. She had yet to meet the man. She had yet to meet the man that she needed to meet. Everyone needs a saviour. And so something is wrong. Something is massively wrong in our world. It's humanly impossible to find living water without the Messiah. Australia loves its beer, but we are a thirsty nation. And we're a nation that needs the living water. We often seek it in relationship. We seek fulfillment through material things, through wealth and, fa- and power, but sadly it only ends in brokenness and shame. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. She needed a divine well that sat on her well. And so he asked her for a drink. He said, would you give me a drink? Really? It wasn't in an arrogant way. It was in a connective way. Today it'd be like saying, can we do coffee? She looks at him and she said, why would you ask me, a Samaritan, for a drink? You know, if you were organizing Jesus' schedule, he only had three years of ministry. It would just seem inept of his time to go and spend it at a lonely well with one woman. He could have been preaching to crowds. He, he could have been spending more time with the disciples. But Jesus is here with a woman. It says something about who he was. He wasn't like the Pharisees of their day who wouldn't go near them, who'd look down their long noses and call her everything that she was. Jesus said, I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. And so Jesus said, if you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you living water. And she said, give me this water, then I'll never thirst again. So Jesus is revealing himself to her here and she says, I want this water. Would you give me this water? Then he asks her a strange question. He said, well, go and get your husband. Why didn't he say, go and get your kids? Why didn't he say, go and get your sister? Why didn't he say, go and get the guy you're living with? Why did he say, go and get your husband? Jesus is digging in here. Jesus is is going to say something to this woman that would ultimately change her life and realize that she was loved. Why would he bring up her past? He touches her pain, go get your husband. Jesus is going after the space that only he can heal. Jesus engages the point in our lives where we need healing. You know, when God comes to us, he comes to us at our point of need. Throughout the scriptures, throughout the gospels, you will see Jesus always meeting people at their point of need. You know, I think a great slogan for any church would be, come as you are. Jesus was saying to this woman, I love you for who you are. He was, he was going to dig deep and reveal to her her failure, which she knew very well, And she was making it very clear to him, I know you. I know all about you. In fact, I know more about you than you know about yourself. You can't hide anything from me. 
you can trust me with everything that has happened to you in your life. It, it is revealed. I am the Messiah. I am God. I understand you. I know you. Yet, I love you. I know everything about you. And yet, I love you. And that's why Jesus touches us in the area where we need our healing. Don't hide your failure and your past from God because as you allow Him to deal with your past and your failure, you will be healed. If you try and hide yourself from Him, if you won't allow yourself to be vulnerable in His presence, He can't heal you. And so I ask you the question this morning, where did he come to you and what did he say to you? He said to her, where is your husband? She said, well, we've been looking for the Messiah. And he said, I am he. I'm the guy. <laughs> I'm the man you've been looking for. And that was the clinching moment in her life. He knows me, yet he loves me. Scripture says the woman left her water jar. She didn't even fill it up. I love that. I love the fact that this story says she was so excited. She was so filled with joy. She had met the Messiah. She had met the man. She didn't bother about that natural water anymore. She, the Bible says she ran into town. And I love it when she runs back into town and she says, I have found me a man. Can you imagine what they said? Oh, no, not another one. I have found me a man who has told me everything about myself. In other words, he's told me everything. He knows me, yet he loves me. He's the one. You should meet him. Do you know when Jesus heals us, when he touches us, when he changes our life, it makes a difference and gives us our voice in life. I really felt today that God wants to give some people here your voice. You've never had a voice. You've always been silenced by your past. But God today wants to give you your voice. He wants you to speak like this woman spoke. He doesn't want you to be out there alone having no influence in life and on others. He wants you to be the voice in the city. And so she comes back as a witness and she said, it's the one I've been looking for all along. The scripture says, he that is forgiven much, loveth much. The greatest sinners make the greatest saints. The greatest failures can make the greatest winners. In life, we've all failed. But that's why we need the Saviour. It's not over. It only just begins when we find Him. The healed would now heal. The whole would now bring wholeness. The found would find the lost. So where were you? What were you doing when, you, when He found you? When He came and sat by your well, what were you doing? What did he say to you? He is the Messiah. He's the Son of God. He's the Saviour of the world. You can allow him to take all of you. I'll just have the, the worship team come and I just want you to close your eyes right now and just... Just allow yourself to be vulnerable before him this morning. Because he wants to take your past and your pain and he wants to heal you. He wants to help you. 
All have sinned. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Where were you when he came to your well? Just play the strings or something there for us, Jenna. Do you know about 18, when I was 18 years of age, I got the license, my car license, and I had my own car. And I went through a stage where I'd been brought up in the church and I had, I was told to come to church. If I didn't want to go to church, well, that's too bad. You're coming, you're the preacher's kid, and so you come. But now I had my own car. I had my own license. And I remember walking out of church one night before the service had finished. It was about halfway through and I thought, am I going to do this journey with God or not? And I drove down the main street. It was the main street of Tamworth. I could take you to the very spot and I sat there in the main street. There was a whole lot of stuff going on. There was people in the pub and a lot of young people around. A lot of excitement. And then the Holy Spirit said to me, you can have all this. You can have this excitement and you can do these things. But he said, you'll, you'll be like a, a firecracker that goes off and there's a lot of sparks and excitement. But in the end, you'll just be like a burnt out shell. There'll be nothing there. There'll be emptiness. And that night, I decided to really follow Jesus. He came and sat at my well, and he spoke to me that night. For each and every one of us in our journey, there's got to be that moment when the divine sits by you and your well. He says to you today, you can find living water that springs up to eternal life. I am. I am He. I'm the one you're looking for. It's not found in money, in wealth, in material possessions. It's not found in that hobby. It's not found in that job. It's not even found in that marriage. It's Him. It's Jesus. While every head is bowed, every eye is closed, here right now, if you need to find him, if you need to know him, and Jesus is sitting by your well today, just lift your hand and say, Jesus, I'm looking to you right now. Take me. Come on, just put your hand up. Put it back down again. If you need to do that this morning, yeah, God bless you. Anybody else just need to do that? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The moment the divine engages the human and the journey begins. Do you walk out to the well still though? Do you walk alone? Do you walk in shame? Or are you free? Are you totally free? Have you let it all go? Because I want to tell you, the enemy's there every day just saying, you know what you did back there? He holds us. He locks us in to shame. But Jesus is the one who says to us, I know everything about you. Come as you are. Come as you are. Lord, I just pray right now for every life, for every person, that there will be freedom in their life today, that you know who we are and you yet came and sat next to us. You offered yourself to us in an embrace of love. I pray there'll be healing, there'll be release, there'll be a letting go, that you'll give voice to those who have lost their voice, that they will rise from their tomb. They'll be released into all that you have for them. We thank you that you love us for who we are. You meet us at our point of need. We thank you today in Jesus' precious name. Thanks for taking the time to listen to this week's message. If we can help you in any way, please get in touch with us via the web at
www.caloundra.churchontherise.org.au.